Hi everybody, um, this is a quick look at some of the new Mesh Fusion UI uh, items and options. Um, they reflect some of the uh, core technology changes we've made uh, for mesh generation and uh, the control of fusion strip geometry. These new capabilities are uh, available in both the 801 and 901 versions of Mesh Fusion. Uh, this video was recorded in 801, but uh, the UI for the most part, especially in the uh, Fusion Item Properties panel, is identical between those versions. Uh, whatever other small differences there are, I will uh, point out as we go along. So we can see that the uh, Properties panel has been uh, reorganized a little bit and has a few new items. Um, Part of the reorganization is this uh, distinction between strip settings, starting with this top global strip settings section. Changes to these settings will always be applied to every strip in your Fusion model. Whereas default strip settings are settings that may be overridden and usually are overridden by the individual strip items settings. Um, the only purpose of the default strip settings as found here in the item properties panel, the fusion item properties panel, is to set the initial settings of any new strips that are added to your model. So uh, changing these settings um, after strips have been added to your model will not normally have any effect on, these, on those strips. And uh, none of this is different. Again, we have just uh, reorganized it to make the roles of these various strip settings clearer. Below those strip settings, we have the modeling utilities section um, and the display utilities section. Those have not really changed other than the removal of some redundant items that are more appropriately found in other places within Mesh Fusion's UI. Uh, including some strip editing and management uh, functions that are uh, more naturally found in the strip options popover form. And below that, we have the Fusion Mesh segment um, where you set your mesh mode and turn UVs on or off. Uh, that's all the same as before, um, but we've divided uh, mesh details below that with some of the um, finer controls for your mesh. And there are some new features there, and we will go over those later in the video. And finally below that is output mesh, which is not, uh, which is hidden at this point, but uh, nothing has changed there. In the global strip settings, we have strip rows, which is the same as it's always been, and you can see that changing in the model there. And again, these apply to all strips in the model, these global settings. But uh, corner rounding is relatively new, and you might not be familiar with it. Um, what it does is uh, increase or decrease the amount of rounding when strips meet in a corner like we see here in this model. Decreasing corner rounding makes the corner tighter and ultimately with other settings in play can give us a relatively sharp uh, angular sort of corner. One of the things preventing us from getting an angular corner right now is the relatively long quads in the strip and that's where this new strip quad length setting comes into play. We can now arbitrarily set the uh, length of the strip quad uh, to something less than its normal 100%, which is what we've always had in the past. And that 100% refers to the length of the strips along the quad uh, relative to the average size of the source mesh quads that they encounter. So that length of quads along the strip is still relative to source mesh quad sizes, but is now completely independent of those quad sizes. And that allows us to get uh, much higher fidelity strips and uh, definitely much better uh, treatment of the strip in corners. So we'll take a look at absolute strip widths a little later in the video, but for now let's skip down a bit. We're going to close modeling utilities and display utilities. Again, nothing is really change there and focus instead on some of these fusion mesh settings, uh, mesh and mesh details. The relax mesh topo and related relax iterations uh, settings are new in the sense they were uh, essentially always on by default in previous versions of mesh fusion, uh, but now you have control and that's because we discovered that 
while uh, relaxing the mesh is often useful for um, curvilinear sorts of models, um, it can get in the way when trying to produce uh, more angular uh, mechanical sorts of models, so we have given you control. So you can see as we toggle it off here how some of these small quads and triangles around the strip um, appear to disappear. Uh, don't be fooled, they're actually still there, they're just tucked up against the strip. In other words, no relaxation is being allowed, which would allow them to sort of migrate across the surface of the fusion mesh. Whether you want to relax mesh topo or not uh, really depends on the model, um, its form, uh, the density of its meshes, and other factors, and uh, we'll look into that in future videos. For now, I'll just say with uh, what I would call crisper and more uh, angular sorts of meshes and uh, with source meshes of lower density, which are much more viable now with the uh, new fusion technologies, uh, you'll often find that turning a relaxed mesh topo off will be a uh, better choice. And next we have this remove close verts setting. That limits the amount of optimization mesh fusion does along the strip. Um, specifically, it uh, can completely protect all vertices that were derived from the original um, source meshes. Setting it to zero will ensure that none of those original source uh, vertices are removed. Um, and again, this is one of those things that becomes uh, more valuable as you start working with uh, lower density source meshes and you really want to preserve the integrity of the original geometry. And again, we'll look at that in more detail in future videos. Uh, same thing with this cage vertices option, which is a, a bit obscure. It, it allows you to base the fusion model on the actual Catmull-Clark cage of the source meshes as opposed to its subdivided uh, interpolated form. But uh, right now, I'd like to focus on uh, the more interesting aspect of these new features, which is the ability to have uh, distance-defined absolute width strips and also to maintain constant width along the length of strips. Up until now, uh, fusion strip widths have always been expressed as a percentage of the size of the adjacent uh, source mesh quads. And while there's a great deal of convenience with this, it does lead to some uh, undesirable effects and artifacts and does not give you consistent width along the strip. Although it's fairly subtle in this model and the strips don't look too bad, you can see those effects wherever the strips navigate around tight corners or are involved with tight angles where the cone, like where the cone meets the uh, barrel there in the back or where this uh, cutter cuts a hole through the barrel at the bottom and, and uh, that cut creates a sharp angle between the two surfaces. We see a lot of variation in strip width here even though it's all specified to be the same percentage. So let's try converting this model to uh, absolute width strips and uh, see what that gets us. Uh, before I do that I want to do this one thing. I noticed that I forgot to lower the density of this cutter. Um, there's really no reason for it to be as dense as it is. Its surface is all internal and uh, you won't notice any sort of faceting once it's uh, smoothly shaded. And uh, again, as mentioned before, uh, these new fusion technologies are much more tolerant of differences in quad sizes and densities, so there's really no reason not to lower this all the way. And by the way, um, to get it all the way down to density zero, meaning that it will match the density of the original source mesh, we need to set both its fusion subdivs and tracking subdivs to zero. All right, with that taken care of, let's go ahead and convert these strips to absolute width. And to do that, we need to go back to the fusion item in the items list. And in its properties panel, we are going to click on this checkbox, use absolute strip widths. And after doing that, you'll notice a couple of changes. Uh, width is now expressed in millimeters, and there is this new item called constant width. You'll also notice that all the strips became very narrow. That's kind of a uh, safety feature, if you will. 
um, absolute widths are interpreted very differently. Uh, the geometry can affect them in different ways. So the safest thing to do is to make them very narrow and then widen them back to where we'd like them to be. Um, in the future, we, we plan on uh, doing something more sophisticated here and, and trying to uh, preserve strip widths when doing the conversion from uh, relative to absolute. Uh, but for now, this is uh, a fairly straightforward uh, method. So to bring strip width back up where I would like it to be, I'm going to go ahead and select all strips. And uh, since we are working with absolute values here, and I have a pretty good idea uh, how wide I'd like my strips to be in terms of millimeters, I find that these um, edit selected strip controls uh, work pretty well. I simply set the uh, desired width here in millimeters and then hit the set button. That's the difference with these controls. The uh, sliders don't interactively change the model. You have to uh, hit one of the three buttons below the slider to affect the change. So we can see now with our absolute width strips in place and specified uh, in this case to 60 millimeters, that strip widths are consistent everywhere, including where the cone meets the barrel and where those two cutouts occur from the cutter inside of the barrel. Um, if we want to get even more uh, refined with our strips, we could go ahead and adjust that uh, quad length along the strip and get an even tighter corner and higher fidelity in our strip geometry. And remember that uh, strip quad length is a global strip setting, so we need to go back to the fusion item properties. And here I'm doing that with uh, channel hall. Uh, you could do it right there in the properties panel, but you get a little bit better interactivity when using channel hall. And uh, you can see we get a pretty nice uh, corner there with the uh, higher density along the strip. Um, but this is a good uh, chance to point out how that uh, relax mesh topo feature comes into play. Uh, in this case, you can see it kind of reveals all of that uh, accommodation required of the lower density meshes describing the uh, main surfaces of the fusion model, uh, how that has to adjust to the high density of the strip. Um, not necessarily something that's helpful or that we want to see, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that relaxation off. So all of the same strip editing uh, options are available for absolute width strips as we had for the relative strip widths. I can uh, click on a strip segment and uh, select the loop. Here Fusion is reminding me that I need to generate substrips. That's nothing new. Um, so yes, any strip or substrip can be uh, edited independently. Its width can be changed independently. Uh, it will still be uh, consistent, uh, constant along the length of that segment or segments. And don't be uh, misled by this standard strip channel hall setup uh, where you see a percentage for width. That's because the standard option is, as you recall, proportional scaling of all of the selected strip segments. So we're still actually editing uh, absolute width strips. We're just proportionally changing their uh, distance-based width. Holding down the Alt key while pressing channel hall brings up uniform strip editing where we can set all of the selected strips to uh, any desired width. And in that case, you will see the width expressed as millimeters. Absolute width strips have an additional setting that you may have noticed uh, called constant width. And what that does is define how strict Fusion is about enforcing constant width along the entire length of a strip or a strip segment. There are cases where you want to relax that a bit, and I won't get into the details of that here, but we'll take a quick look at the control. It's available when you do uh, normal channel hauling, and it's also available in the uh, Edit Selected Strips section of uh, the Strips Properties panel. The effect is pretty subtle on this model, uh, just because of the nature of the geometry. Um, but you can see it change a little bit as I lower that value. You can see the strip widths vary a little bit. Um, and uh, in many cases, you will want it to be strict uh, for the entire model. And uh, that's another place where the Edit Selected Strips uh, Controls are handy. You can just easily set everything to 100% uh, with this constant width setting.
And just a word of caution with these absolute width strips, with the old um, relative widths, it was fairly difficult. You had to you had to sort of go out of your way to make widths that were uh, extremely wide and uh, too wide for fusion to handle. With uh, absolute widths, of course, it can be a fairly simple thing to do. You could set them to be um, kilometers wide if you wanted to. So uh, just keep that in mind and uh, keep your uh, values uh, proportional to your geometry, and uh, all should be good. All right, uh, more to come. Thanks.